Welcome to this online lesson asking the question, how healthy were medieval towns and cities? Our aims are to know some strengths and weaknesses of public health in medieval towns and cities, to explain what measures were taken to improve health, and to evaluate the effectiveness of these measures. Firstly, we're going to consider this key term, public health. Public health relates to the overall health of the whole population. This might include how common diseases, preventing outbreaks of disease, how towns were planned and kept clean, how much food people have and how healthy they are in general, and what governments do to encourage or control the health of the people. And it's particularly that last one that relates to public health. Some tasks then. Firstly, record your own detailed definition of public health. And I do emphasise the detailed bit there. Look, there's a lot that goes on to do with public health. Secondly, give some examples of modern public health measures. OK, pause the video here and then press play when you're ready to continue. So hopefully we've got a detailed definition for public health, but just review those bullet points and make sure that you have. Modern public health is all around us. In Britain, the most visible example of this is the NHS or National Health Service. This is government run and funded by taxpayers' contributions, or rather national insurance contributions. But it wasn't always like that. Previous to that, people had to pay for their health care. Indeed, during the 2020 and 2021 pandemic, public health was again all around us, providing free vaccines, health care for the sick. And even things like lockdown and telling people to stay home are examples of public health in action in the modern era. But what did public health look like in the Middle Ages? Have a look at this artist's impression of a medieval town. It's not meant to uh, suggest that it's anywhere in particular, it's just supposed to give an impression of what a typical town might have looked like and give us as many different examples of kind of living conditions as is possible. What public health risks can you identify in this image? List as many as you can. And if you're not watching this video full screen, this is a real encouragement to do so, otherwise you won't be able to see most of the detail. Then secondly, what measures might be taken to improve the health of this town? OK, pause the video here and then press play when you're ready to see some suggestions. Although there are so many in here, I'm not going to look at all of them. Here are some basic examples. Firstly, animals were common in towns much like they are not common there today. The fact of the matter was that animals had to be brought live into towns because there was no refrigeration. You might be able to see just to the right of this circle the butchers as well, where pigs are being slaughtered in the streets. Also, the waste from the butchers, from the toilets, and even someone who's been drinking too much at the alehouse being sick into the river, or maybe taking a, a wee into it as well. All of this industrial, human and animal waste would end up into the rivers. This was not a bad idea on the face of things, because at the very least, this would carry all that horrible stuff out of the city. The problems came with anyone who was using the water further downstream, perhaps to collect drinking water or to wash their clothes. Also, streets tended to be narrow and very crowded. This encouraged the spread of disease. Not only that, but you can see an open sewer is running through the middle of the street. This would also have been disgusting, smelly and also have emptied right out into the river. And believe me, it would have filled up. You can see how many people are cramped into this small town with open shop fronts and people living right next to each other. And chucking their waste out of the windows. So there's loads to see going on here. At the end of this lesson, you're going to be asked to complete an exam question. Explain the problems of public health in medieval England and the attempts to improve health. You may use the following in your answer, animals and water supply. You must also use information of your own. You will see lots of information on medieval public health. You're going to make detailed notes under the headings of problems and solutions and explain how effective the solutions you identify are. However, if you've already done this topic and you want to treat this as a sort of exam practice uh, lesson, then by all means you can attempt to answer that question now. If not, you can move on, we'll make your notes and we'll answer it at the end. Let's have a look at our first section. Remember to record your notes under the headings of problems and solutions. In the Middle Ages, people cared about public health. 
which again, I remind you, is the health of the population as a whole. The wealthy spent money to keep towns clean and they tried to improve sanitation and introduce clean water where they could. London was the first town in Europe to have piped water supply. However, the cost of public health improvements was high, so the poor still lived in dirty conditions. The king needed to approve such works too, and any taxes needed to pay for them. Taxes were very unpopular, so most of the time it would be wealthy individuals who would build them, rather than collecting the money as a whole. OK, pause the video here and add to your problems and solutions notes now. What else? Some specific improvements. Butchers were ordered to use a separate area for butchering, butchering animals, and butchers could to be put into the stocks or fined for selling gone-off meat. By the 1380s, there were at least 13 common privies, or public loos, in London. These did empty straight into the River Thames, however. Fines were given for, given for littering, or you could be put in the pillory. A picture of a pillory is included down in the bottom right there, and yes, people really could throw stuff at you. People often refer to this arrangement as the stocks, but actually the stocks were for your feet. Rakers were employed to remove muck and rubbish from the street, especially the build-up of animal dung. Add these to your notes and, as an extension, write them down in your order of importance. OK, pause the video here while you add to your problems and solutions. OK, let's move on. We're now going to consider public health in a wider sense. Here's another problem. Waste and litter. Streets were filled with litter. People threw food waste, blood and human waste into the, the streets and into the rivers. Another problem, dirty water. Water supplies were polluted by human and industrial waste. Most people got drinking water from untreated rivers. Another problem, leaking latrines and toilets. Latrines, toilets and cesspits contaminated the water supplies. And there were too many animals. With no refrigeration, animals were brought into the streets alive and slaughtered in the streets. Horses and other animals left dung in the streets too. But there are solutions. Laws backed by fines banned littering. Public latrines were built. Butchers had to get rid of waste or be fined. Another solution. Lead pipes brought water to the city of Gloucester and an aqueduct for public fountains was used in Exeter. Another solution was that laws on locations for latrines were introduced. Cesspits had to be stone-lined to stop them leaking, and night carts emptied the cesspits daily so, they, so that they didn't overflow. And also the rakers were employed to clean the streets. Cities like Newcastle paved the streets to help keep them dry and clean. I can imagine that being a raker or a night cart operator would have been two of the stinkiest and most horrible medieval jobs imaginable. Here are some tasks then. Add to your notes. And then explain which solution was probably most effective and why, why in your view. Pause the video while you complete your notes on problems and solutions. Hopefully your notes are sufficiently detailed now that you don't have to get any more. However, if they are a little bit light, go back to earlier in this video and boost them up a bit. We're going to attempt the exam style question now. Explain the problems of public health in medieval England and the attempts to improve health. You may use the following in your answer. Animals and water supply. You must also use information of your own. In the Edexcel exam, a 12 mark answer like this will take you between 18 and 20 minutes to write. There are six marks for your uh, knowledge and six marks for your explanation. Although you'll only pick up these marks for explanation if they are in relation to the question. So read it again. Explain the problems of public health in medieval England and the attempts to improve them. So, you've been given the hints animals and water supply, but you're not going to pick up all your marks for knowledge if that's all you include, because you must include some information of your own. I'm now going to give you some advice on how to answer it. You don't have to follow this, but if you do struggle to structure your answers, this is a useful way of doing it. I describe this as being three peel paragraphs. Point, example, explain and link. Firstly, make your point. One problem or one attempt to improve public health was... An example of this was, and that's where you need to be really specific and detailed with your knowledge, and the effect of this was or this involved. You then link your explanation back to the question. You've got to link it to the problems of public health or an attempt to improve health. So this was a problem or this helped improve public health because. Once you've done three examples there, presumably you will have covered animals, water supply, and at least one example from your own knowledge. 
You don't have to use animals and water supply if you don't understand those topics. You can just choose a couple of others if you wish. Then, once you've done your appeal paragraphs, conclude with a short paragraph. What was the most important problem or attempt to improve public health? Or what was the overall trend of trying to improve public health or the overall trend of problems? OK, it'll take you between 18 and 20 minutes to answer that question unless you're entitled to extra time. So have a go at it now. Pause the video while you do it. Done? Let's have a look at an example. I've colour coded my point example explaining link in these colours. Unless you want to look like a real amateur, you don't actually want to put the headings point example explaining link in your answer. Otherwise, it really won't look like you know what you're doing. Instead, I've used this colour coding to just show you the structure more clearly in my example answer. In my first paragraph, I use the first stimulus point, which is animals. One problem of medieval public health was the number of animals in cities. For example, butchers had to slaughter live animals in the city itself. The effect of this was that the blood and waste of these animals could clutter the streets, making them filthy. This was, this was a problem for medieval public health because the dirt and filth would attract disease-carrying rats and increase the risk of disease from dirty water and polluted streets. OK, so the purple section there is relating my explanation back to that question about explaining the problems and solutions of medieval public health. So you do need to include that to get those all-important AO2 or explanation marks. Here's my next one, and I've used water supply here. Another problem of medieval public health was water supply. For example, latrines often emptied into open sewers or into the rivers. This caused pollution and disease as many people got their drinking water from the same places that sewage and waste were ending up. This was a problem for medieval public health as, it polluted water, as the polluted water was more likely to carry disease when there was no reliable or fresh water supply. However, medieval governments did take action to try and improve public health bringing more of my own knowledge into this. For example, butchers who left mess in the streets could be fined, and some cities such as Exeter introduced clean piped water. The effect of this was that health conditions in towns and cities could be improved, and this shows that there were some effective attempts to improve health issues such as bad water supply and dirt in the streets. Now I conclude. Overall, the biggest factor in attempting to improve medieval public health was the action of town and city governments. Local rules and fines could have an impact on improving health, and this meant that while there were problems, medieval people did take action to try and address them. This shows that while there were significant problems of dirt, bad water and disease, medieval towns and cities did understand the need to try and prevent these problems through the actions of local government. Well, there are various different explanations you could have given there and different conclusions too. However, that's my go at this. It only took me about 10 minutes to type up. But remember, you've actually got anything up to around 20 minutes to write your answer. If you want to make some improvements to your answer because you've missed some things or you've not explained clearly enough, then by all means make sure you're looking at this full screen so that the text is maximum clarity and have a go at improving it now. Otherwise, that's the end of this lesson. I hope it's been both useful and interesting to you. And if it has, give this brief video a like and subscribe to the channel where I'll be providing more content in this uh, sense. Of course, this is only an introduction, so any further reading and research you can do on the topic of public health will definitely be of benefit to you. Other than that, Thanks once more and good health.